Hello, my name is Winchester Cork. I'm with Pittsburgh State University, and this is the uh, short description of bicycle braking systems. Now, you'll have to excuse the helicopter in the background. I live within walking distance of a uh, medical facility. Now, uh, I have an example of uh, a mountain bike in the front to uh, illustrate what uh, a cantilever braking system looks like. And uh, it's, the, uh, it's the choice of many uh, mountain bikes as of uh, the early to mid 90s when, uh, when I started riding as uh, you know, just to pass the time while in, uh, while in grade school. And uh, I knew at that point that uh, the cantilevers were a uh, were the ideal choice. However, they were a little bit out of my price range at the time. Now, uh, braking is of course done with a system. You have components that uh, that perform a function. The uh, the system has attributes to it. It stops the bicycle. Now all the parts work together to, uh, you know, to, to, to of course, do a, uh, do a task, in this case, to stop the bike. Uh, you know, they have uh, some kind of an actuator that the user applies, applies force on to transfer power from that uh, from that lever down a rod or a cable to the uh, to to the uh, the braking mechanism itself and that of course provides the stopping force with uh, with pressure and uh, friction against the uh, against the braking surface now that friction of course works uh you know works against the inertia of the bicycle combined with the, the weight of the rider uh there where we're talking about a moving object that is of course trying to stay moving and it's the brake's job to make sure that that doesn't continue further uh so arguably more friction is well more stopping power in here we have an example of a disc brake and we're seeing that more and more as, uh, as time and technology progress it's obviously, obviously uh, reached people's price points and uh, for that matter the uh, you know the practicality that uh, that one should expect from well obviously a bicycle <laughs> Now, I haven't quite uh, advanced to that point in, uh, in in our progress yet, but here are a couple of examples, one more familiar than the other. Now, the one on the right is your standard, basic, Chai brake. It is a side pull caliper. There are many others in, uh, in the bicycle world that are just like that. In fact, my, my first scooter had one exactly like that. Of course, this one is about $16 more because, well, they'd have to make money. Now, the one on the left is significantly uh, more expensive. It's a, it is designed to be a lot lighter than the one on the right. Now, uh, you know, with that, uh, with that, additional reduction in weight comes an additional increase in price now that is about a 400 euro instrument on somebody's bicycle that is not mine but without the stopping power in either case bicycles will need to rely on some other means of stopping and uh, that may be like in this case the runaway ramp now Arguably, that is an impractical choice for uh, for most municipalities, and uh, you know, certainly anywhere that uh, where land is uh, is in some kind of demand. Now, the ability to stop the bicycle makes it more user friendly. Anybody with the ability to push pedals can ride the bike safely, and that mobility is of course, increased. You don't need to build those ramps and we can just move along with our current infrastructure. Now, there is, of course, a little bit of history with the bicycle. Now, 
the uh, an early example is the uh, the invention of Carl von Trace in 1817, the uh, the Love Machine. Now it's also referred to as a Dracine, and uh, its braking system was a uh, it was a, a spoon that came in contact with uh, with the wheel, so as to uh, so facilitate that stopping. Now it wasn't self-propelled system, but however, once again, that inertia is uh, is enough that it could become a hazardous piece of equipment under the wrong circumstances, so you need to be able to stop the machine. Now, in the 1870s, caliper braking first came into, into being. Now, because a lot, of, uh, a lot of wheel rims were in fact wood at that time, they used felt pads. They didn't want rubber for that. Now, of course, the coaster brake was an 1890s invention, and discs weren't even... Uh, they weren't as common in the 1950s, but they, they did exist. Now, I already talked about cantilevers in, uh, in an earlier slide. And as, a, uh, as an experienced cyclist, I can think of some things that, uh, that I would like to see improve with, uh, with, with, a, uh, with the bicy bicycle braking system. Now, obviously, I've replaced a few pads, and I would love very much to have a little greater ease in calibrating these braking systems. You know, you can, bump into a rock or have to change a flat and all of a sudden everything is more off uh, out of tolerance from what I'm uh, what I'm accustomed to and so that can uh, that, that can cause uneven wear in the uh, in the braking system now of course discs are still heavy but they're also both expensive and it's very hard to find shoes for the uh, you know, for uh, for disc brakes and uh, you know, I know we've gone into the uh, the next slide, but uh, there are a couple of things I'd love to see improve with bicycle braking. Of course, one of them is that flexibility with bent, bumpy rims. Now, I'll, I'll bump into things all the time. My uh, my bicycle do work for me, and uh, and so with that, I get a little wear and tear over time, and I never have time to true the rims. So I want to be able to have that uh, have something that's a little more forgiving, so that I don't uh, so so that I don't lose any stopping power. And also, since I have to do that maintenance, I would um, prefer to have the uh, have some easier. Um, Oh, serviceability. Have one size for all of your nuts and bolts. You know, for the most part, that is the case, although I have run into a few that use either an English size versus the 10 millimeter that, uh, that I'm more accustomed to seeing. In other cases, maybe we have a 9 millimeter nut on the, uh, on the cable versus a 10 on the main spindle. And uh, you know, these are just things that I've run into in my experience. And you have a wonderful, uh, wonderful day, and don't forget.